This movie serves as another direct sequel to the 1974 original movie and focuses on a bunch of young entrepreneurs traveling to the town of Harlow, Texas with a view to renovating the location and turning it into a hipster hotspot. First of all, if you're expecting gore and red stuff, this is the movie for you. Things get bloody in this one. One thing this movie cannot be accused of is watering down the violence. In fact, it might be one of the most gruesome installment in the franchise to date. Unfortunately, that's where the positives end. Just like many inferior sequels and reboots before it, it never comes close to matching the sustained terror of the original. The movie has a difficult time making much sense, desperately wanting to say something coherent about trauma, consumerism, and modern social malcontent. The script cannot figure out rooting interests, needlessly offer complicating backstories and motivations. The premise is convoluted, as the script jiggles more ideas than it cares to actually chew. It tries to add some social commentary that becomes incoherent. The movie is trying to capture the layers from past and present and also larger themes, but the script is abysmal, with nothing coming together into a solid single vision. The movie struggles to connect the plot's puzzle pieces along with its sentiments. It becomes a mess when it comes to voice and purpose. The film is chunk into what feels like segments that are unsatisfying. Most of the social commentary ends up being meaningless. The film casually rewrites key aspects of the Leatherface mythos while simultaneously reviving some of its least essential elements. Plot strands are frequently left dangling, and the film needlessly complicates matters by supplying a new backstory for Leatherface that strangely ignores his family. The movie makes zero effort to bring anything new to the massacre here, and almost seems to embrace the sheer banality of the script. We're not even given a chance to like any of the characters before they are systematically slaughtered in true gory fashion. The sole survivor of the first film, Sally Hardesty, actually returns to face down her nemesis and is completely wasted in what amounts to little more than a cameo. There is never time for the true weight or gravitas of this showdown happening after nearly half a decade since their original battle. The movie should just focus on her instead of the profoundly irritating bunch we are forced to spend time with. There's simply no engaging story, nor any likable hero to root for. As entertaining as it is to watch Leatherface do his thing for a while, when there's no real suspense or tension to be mined from any of the carnage on display, things begin to get very tedious very quickly. Overall, if this movie is playing in theaters, we wouldn't recommend it. But since it's playing on Netflix, coming in at a mere 81 minutes, the film might not always be good, but at least it doesn't feel like a slog to sit through and gory enough to be fun.